Hey, Rachel. How are you? I'm good, Louie. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sitting with me here、uh, in this version of Studio Confessions Live, in this new paradigm that we're sitting in. How have you been coping? You know, surprisingly,、uh, pretty well.、Um, everybody's healthy, fingers crossed. So that's, that's the most important part, right?、Um, and just really trying to keep busy, keep moving forward. Uh, stay connected. I think those are the most important、uh, factors right now with the, you know, the uncertainty and just really keeping my head where my feet are, not trying to think too far ahead of where this is going, what, what's going to be ahead, and stay, trying to stay out of that fear. Oh, that's such、possible. a good point. Yeah, to stay in the moment, right? Yeah,、yep. I like that. I like that.、Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. You are the co founder and、uh, the director of Conception Art. Can you tell me what that is? Absolutely. So, Conception Arts is a community of visual artists.、Uh, we have worked collectively with over 8,000 artists since we started in 2011. Wow.、Uh, on two continents, both here and also very briefly in the UK.、Uh, we've had shows in 15 cities around the US.、Uh, we produce pop up art events. And in addition to that, we also provide community. Resources, advice, and mentorship for our community of artists as well. That's fantastic. Can I tell you, I really feel like I need to thank you and your team because I did a, a, one of your events in New York in October of maybe three years ago, and it、oh. really propelled me to want to like, open up my own pop up. And I did in Soho for a brief moment, and it was just that, that moment was like, yeah, this is totally possible and we can totally do it. You know? And I did it, and it was fun, and it played out, and now it's another day. <laughs> But it was great. So thank you for that、uh, momentum,、Absolutely. really. And that's the key. It's like, you know, everybody has kind of their own measure of success,、um, you know, and, and, and kind of goals of what, where they want to take their art business. And we just like being a part of that journey. Like, we kind of see ourselves as almost like a greenhouse, right? Like, so it's like we. Take you in, you know, when you're not sure necessarily where you, you know, what your big, big goal is or your big plan is. And we want to be a part of that journey, you know, to, to help you really just to really be like a launch pad for emerging artists. So that's super exciting that you, you were able to do your own pop up as well. That's awesome to hear. Thank you. Yeah, and it makes so much sense the idea of your own、uh, success me- metrics, right? Yeah. So, yep. what I took away from that experience with you guys was there was a real palpable sense of community and.、Mm-hmm. Um, I worked with Renee and she was such, she had such good energy. And I think that's what I was like, yeah, this is what I want. I want that energy in talking to people,、um, which is now manifested in this podcast and this video. So it's, we've come full circle. So thanks. <laughs> and I think it's something that's just lacking in the, in the community. You know, when you think back to other times, like historically,、um, artists were in these small, tight knit communities and working together and You know, any kind of movement that you can think of, you can think of like the key players that were all around each other and being inspired by each other. And I think while tech has given us so many resources and so much、uh, more of a broader reach in terms of who we can impact with our artwork, it's also separated us a little bit and we lose that sense of community. So we were, that was something that we always strive for at Conception was, okay, let's make this like a family. Let's make sure that everybody feels. Included because they, they are. I mean, they, it, is, it has become like a family. You know, we have people with us that have been showing for, with us for almost a decade. So that was always something that was very key for me to,、um, to make sure that, you know, artists left feeling like that, that was the end of you know, that. being in the show. That wasn't it. We didn't part ways, that we were kind of in this together and、uh, united on this creative journey. That's fantastic. And you're also, I love it when what you do in your business also carries out in the other projects that you do. You're also a mentor for New Inc., is that correct? Yes, yes. that's a recent、uh, new addition to my、uh, repertoire. My, the day, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, yes.、Um, it just came about really from really becoming passionate about kind of、um, paying it forward. So, you know, you, you know, you've noticed yourself probably that we've been doing a lot more on the. I guess the expanding people's business knowledge in terms of how they can create sustainable businesses as artists. So it's not just about the show. You know, we have a podcast ourselves、um, where we've, you know, we're in our second season now. We've, we've covered everything from 
you know, working with gallerists to marketing to just, you know, other techniques that you can use to propel yourself forward. So I really just started having a passion for that. And I've, you know, worked with private clients uh, before and I've, you know, men mentored different artists. And then that opportunity presented itself and it's wonderful. It's um, a great organization. I mean, a great institution because, you know, the, the fact that they invest in these, you know, relatively unknown emerging artists and startups. Um, and the reason I think they're able to do that is they don't have a permanent collection. So not, not a lot of people realize Good that point. about the museum, but they don't have this, you know, like humongous collection that needs to be, you know, cared for and funded and all these other things. So it's amazing really to see an institution actually really investing in the people that are, you know, coming up from, uh, you know, who are emerging basically. What a great so, thing to point out. Yeah, because these little nuances make such a difference in the way your business, your community, your voice kind of plays out. That's a really great thing. Can you tell me the name of your podcast so we all know and we can all listen? Sure. Absolutely. Smart Art Business. Awesome. We'll keep an eye out. I'll put a link to it. Fantastic. Uh, so you're not from New York originally, correct? No, what gave it away was it my accent. <laughs> <laughs> the book's behind you something. So yeah. why New York? You know, New York was just, I, I visited here when I was 17 for the first time, purely by chance. It was one of those last minute uh, decisions. A friend had a spare ticket and I came here and I just fell in love. I remember just feeling so just in awe of the big city, the big lights, and just <laughs> it felt like a place of possibility from mm. that very first moment I, I really stepped foot on in Manhattan. And then... Um, I always just kind of, I was working a corporate job and in the UK and, you know, I'd always loved the arts and I'd always been very passionate about creating art, but I kind of never thought that I could carve out a career or, you know, be a professional artist, quote unquote, whatever that actually means. <laughs> um, and then I just, I took a leap at 27 and I came here with, you know, a little bit, uh, I guess, over ambitious, you know, I definitely sure. was, uh, knocked off my pedestal a little bit I thought I could come here create art and that would be it and I would have this success and obviously learned the hard way that that's not it's not that easy um and then just what really happened was I started to see that there was really not a lot of opportunities for folks like me who didn't necessarily have that conventional kind of you know went to art school have all these connections, have a trust fund, which seems to be what the big galleries do. <laughs> and, and, I, and I recognized that there was a gap in the market there and that there were so many brilliant creative people that I was surrounded by um, because I actually started working in the bars and restaurants. And right. you know yourself, yeah. when you're in New York, everybody has a talent. Like it's part of the process, I mean, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, there's movies wrote <laughs> about that very topic. Um, so I saw that it was just this this need for something middle, you know, something where we could come out and express ourselves and have a good time doing it. And so that's really how Conception Arts came about. And that's ultimately what kept me, you know, in the US and, and ultimately not returning home after what I thought would be a little short jaunt. But, you know, it eventually uh, there were many reasons that, that kind of kept me, you know, wanting to, to stay here and, and obviously where we are today. Looking back, I'm incredibly grateful that we, we did and we, we kind of stuck with it through the, the challenging times of being right. a business in the early days. But yeah, yeah, I love it's, that. It's a I love that journey and, and that thing in you that uh, you realize that there isn't a door, so you're going to have to bust open a hole and create the door, right? Yeah. Yep. And I think New York uh, attracts people who feel that or who have that in their DNA. Um, so it's great to hear that you're doing it, you did it, and it keeps evolving. Mm -hmm. And it keeps evolving and despite what's happening around the world, and now it's a different day. So can you help me imagine what a new format or a new uh, capitalism, <laughs> capitalistic framework could work where an artist uh, has a part in that? What do you think that could be? So I think we're just at this very interesting crossroads right now. And I don't think that this, I don't feel that, you know, everything's going to just resume as Absolutely it was. Absolutely not. Right. 
Which could be a good thing, right? It could be. It could be a very good thing. And I think you're seeing a lot of, just a lot of activity online, like a surge of activity, right? We're seeing people go live, for example, that you've never seen go live Absolutely. before. We're seeing musicians like bringing us in and, and having that like intimacy, that connection. And I think that's really what we're craving right now. And if anything, I would say that we're craving it more because we can't have it in, Absolutely. in real time. And so I think we will see a little bit more of that. Um, how that works in terms of revenue and you know folks being able to sustain businesses, I imagine that those who can will probably lean towards teaching. Mm -hmm. So if an artist has a particular skill set, I think we're going to see a lot more folks putting themselves out there and actually sharing their experience and perhaps you know having paid courses. So I think there's going to be a big surge in that. Um, you know, you're seeing already that's one of the industries that's actually really thriving right now. Um, and surprisingly, another interesting one, I have a friend uh, who is works for Benjamin Moore, uh, the paint company, and they are seeing a huge influx of people buying paint because I guess I guess folks are trying to redecorate while they're stuck in their houses. I'm in my third reiteration of my living room. So, are yes, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've definitely rearranged this bookshelf uh, more than once in the last four or five Absolutely. days. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. We don't really know the true impact, but if we if we can kind of put our minds in, put ourselves in the shoes of the consumer right now, so say the art consumer, yeah, they're staying home, right? Yeah, it's maybe a captive maybe, audience, right? It is, and maybe they want to change their artwork. Maybe there will be. Once people, I think once we know what's happening economically, like that people are, you know, still hopefully the unemployment uh, figures start to go down and people have a little bit more disposable income. When that does settles, I think we'll have more insight into right. how the market will look. But in terms of what artists can be doing in this, in the meantime, I think it's a great time to be really looking at your assets. So looking at, okay, is my collection solid? Do I have a cohesive body of work? If not, let's, let's make that happen. You know, do I have a strong brand? Is my work organized? Do I have inventory? Do I, you know, take stock? I think this is a perfect time to just hit that reset and just get organized so that when we do hopefully, hopefully come back around to some sense of normalcy that you, you're ready. Absolutely. And actually, serendipitously, um, you have a Grow Your Art Business uh, free seminar that you just launched on Monday, correct? Yes. How so can people still watch that or be part of that? Right. So they would have to act pretty quickly because it actually ends today. Um, okay. But we are going to keep it the videos up online for another two days. So it will be active until Sunday at midnight. Um, it's been amazing. It's it's just been so fun. We've had around about 140 students that actually came in, took the challenge. Um, I've also been going live every day so that I can take their questions. And people are just really engaged and enjoying that's that great. opportunity. So that's been something that's really, um, it's been good for me to keep busy because obviously all our events are canceled. So I have this surprising free time. Amazing, right? <laughs> and it's awesome. You know, we get to, yeah. I get to be of service to our community, which is just really, really important right now. Well, thank you for stepping up. I think it's really important to show up and you clearly are. Um, so that, that's fantastic. Um, can you tell me a little bit once this is done and over, where will be the first place that you jet off to? Ah, that's a, do you mean personally or as a business? <laughs> <laughs> personally, forget business for now. Personally, where are you going to go? Well, we, my wife and I had a vacation planned for, um, for April 9th, which is obviously canceled. We were, we were going to Maui for a big vacation that we've been planning for some time. Have you guys been there yet? Well, I went there many years ago. Uh, my wife has not been there, so she was. I was super excited for her to do, um, yeah. experience it. But you know what? There's much bigger issues happening right now than our vacation. So we will get there. We will do that when 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 it's safe. You know, it's so important that people social distance right now, and you know, it's not even a question. It wasn't even a question for us as to you know canceling the foreseeable events because you know this is so so much bigger than art this whole thing absolutely. Um, and so I think in terms of professionally what will we do um, I would love to see a big comeback show probably in New York once things are you know resumed I think we everybody will need it you know we'll we'll make a big 
celebration of it once it's you know once it once it's safe and i think we need to be really cautious about uh doing anything too soon yeah they can't be stressed uh, enough really especially in new york i think you know in new york it's, it's hit us really hard and unfortunately or fortunately we don't see the visuals of the the death rates we don't see the bodies on the street like we did or like they did in the spanish flu you know it, it, there are many things that are disconnected from us and one of it is the impact or the gravity of it mm -hmm. uh, we didn't even see it on the news really so yeah it's really important to stay home even though it's beautiful outside it was 79 on the weekend you know we yeah. have actually quite a few of our com members of our community that are actually healthcare professionals we've got a couple of doctors we have a surgeon who is a uh, trauma surgeon so just keeping them in our thoughts right now and you know obviously for those that can focus on their art business and doing things you know to to keep momentum going great but there's also those out there that are really on the front lines and you know we just want to extend our gratitude to them and you know personally i want to extend my gratitude to them for just being amazing human beings in general so absolutely shout out to those to those wonderful healthcare and medical workers and I feel you're so right when you, you know, it's not about us, it's about the whole collective. Um, and I feel as artists, I, I mentioned it before we started recording that it feels like we've been preparing for this, right? We know how to work in solitude. We have been working on our craft, on, on our goods. So now it's kind of the time to reach out and, and think about others and how what you make can possibly make someone feel better or, or alleviate or connect, right? A hundred percent. I actually just yesterday, I said to, you know, the community, I'm, but what else can we do for you? Like, we're, we're, tell us, you know, tell us how we can be of service to you. And, and also, if you're out there and you have something that you want to share that we can help you with, like if you have a particular skill set and you want to teach, you know, we'll give you that platform, we'll give you that opportunity. Like, we can help with certainly getting people, you know, a platform to be able to, to share. So that's really important to us right now, using the resources that we have to be able to hopefully elevate some of the folks that are out there with, you know, things to, things to give. So. Yeah. And it's fantastic also because I think the genuine uh, people who are reaching out, it's actually accessible, you know, like you're a real person and, and they're actually, people are responding. It's not this pre-recorded right. uh, message. So I think you're absolutely right. right. Yeah. yeah. And that's a really good point, Louis, because I think that going live more than ever is super important. And I, I was looking at some of the statistics and it said that like 82% of people engage, they engage 82% more with a live video than a regular video. Wow. That's a huge statistic. Like yeah. that is a huge percentage of, of uh, increase. So it's that authenticity, right? People want to do business with purchase from people that they feel that they know, that they like and that they trust, right? And what's more authentic and transparent than a live conversation? Absolutely. I mean, you're not reading off scripts. You're just you being you. That's your authentic self. So I think we're going to see a lot more folks, even those who maybe think, oh, I don't want to do a live, just realizing that it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, Absolutely. it can just, people want humanity right now. They want, they want to hear from people. So I think we'll see a lot more of that. Absolutely. And we don't, we didn't know each other up to this moment. So, I mean, yeah, it, magic is happening. So uh, it, it's, it's an exciting time to reach out. And Rachel, Absolutely. I want to thank you for sitting with me and sharing some of your time. And I look forward to the most amazing things that you're going to do after this is all clear and done with. Uh, so thank you. Absolutely. And just two other things to mention. We are Please. actually planning to launch a monthly membership club. We're going to try and keep the price of the membership really down because obviously people are struggling right now, but we're going to do monthly masterclasses with some art business experts and hopefully some creative folks as well. So I will have more information about that coming soon, but it's artists in action. So you can keep an eye out for that. That will be coming very soon. Fantastic. I'll add it to the uh, note descriptions and we'll keep awesome. an eye on it and uh, boost it. Thank you so much and be safe. Thank you. You too. All the best. Bye.